The event of that summer was the Rhododendron Festival, a vanity fair of attractions designed to lure outsiders and convince them to buy real estate. As fate would have it, this shameless display of all that Bascom hated, commercialization, stereotyping, became the theater for his greatest triumph. The Rhododendron Festival was a strange thing. Uh, you, you, you talk about a potpourri, trying to get everything in. Here is a Negro baby parade. See? Here are beauty pageants. Here are people coming from Canada, Cuba, to participate in the mountains of North Carolina. Asheville parade, sure. Here are military. Do -do. All, all this was part. See, anything that would ring the bell, anything would ring the bell. And lots and lots of people got excited about it. To whip up even more attention, festival organizers turned to a promoter who lived up in the hills, collecting folk culture. Lunsford was asked to put on a little sideshow of locals in hopes that tourists might find them worth a gawk or two. Bascom jumped at the opportunity. This is a gray eagle. It was played at uh, the very first of Mr. Lunsford's festivals, and I've played it for him to open the show several times since then. Lunsford's stage show hit Asheville like a bolt of lightning. 5,000 people showed up. Tourists mixed with mountaineers. Everybody cut loose. The sideshow turned out to be the main event. Well, I was on Pack Square, and there were a lot of people and plenty of chairs there. And I said, what are you doing? What are you doing? We're having a folk festival, Lunsford said. And would you come down, down and sing? I said, what kind of songs do you want? They said, we just like the songs that the people are singing or singing or have sung. We met, we met our little former boy. We met, we met, said she. It's only in the swing. They loved it. And uh, they'd smile good. Oh, Lord, they'd applaud you and holler and try to do it themselves. <laughs> I think maybe the word to describe that, Tommy, that we're seeking, wouldn't it be organized confusion? Really? <laughs> really? As you say, I never, I was on his show more times than I have fingers and toes. And I never knew him missing a lick. As a result of his success, the Mountain Dance and Folk Festival, as it would later be called, became an annual event. As an ever wider group of entertainers got involved, bringing with them new ideas and styles of performing, Bascom tightened his grip on the festival. He became an impresario and increasingly bossy. Well, it seems that one year I went down the festival and all of a sudden he said, Roger, and he said, Roger, yeah, I said, yes. And he takes me by the pants and by the neck and he walks me out of the, uh, of the auditorium on the side, he sort of, just takes me right out, by, and I never knew why. I got from some other person that I was wearing jeans and a plaid shirt at the festival. And uh, he didn't care for that at all. Some of the fellows came on the show with cowboy hats. Bascom stacked them up over on the corner of the stage. What was it he didn't like about those hats? He didn't want any cowboys on that show. He wanted the true. Mountaineer, shall we say? Or is that an offensive word? No, I guess not, because I'm one. Huh. Lunsford always had his own private definition of true mountain music. He would be criticized for single-mindedness. He had no interest in songs that grew out of political issues, labor struggles, or civil rights. He was interested in one strand of music, which he promoted with a passion. 
He got all the good musicians in, the, in this section of the country on the stage there in no time at all. And he didn't pay them very much. He did pay them something like $3, $5. But that was something to get him out there. And in no time at all, the auditorium was filled up with people. Bascom's festival was the beginning of widespread acceptance of the music he championed for so long. Festivals sprouted up all over the country. And as Bascom had long recognized, it was the dancing that drew the biggest crowds. <laughs> 